because it yeah, yeah it's, it's recording now. now. Thank you. Okay. So thanks everybody for turning up. We got uh, let's say twenty three people at the moment in attendance, which is a record, I believe, for one of these webinars that we've had. And we're going to be having the topic of new club creation. I guess everybody knows where the chat box is. If you have any questions during the presentation, please chat in the bottom here and we'll try and answer any questions as they come along. We do have some very experienced Toastmasters on the line. This presentation will be divided into two sections. The first section is going to be approximately 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes in duration and it's going to be based on the Toastmasters International slide, uh, slide set that we have. After that, we're going to be having a Q&A session, and that's where I really want to focus on is that we're answering the questions specifically which you, you know, in the district are having issues with at the moment so we can best provide the service to you that we're wanting, basically. Also, this is going to be a training which we're going to be having every single month to the end of the term. So there's going to be one now, which we're, you know, we're listening to now, and there's going to be one next month also. It's going to be hopefully in the first week of March, and it's going to be also the same slide set for the new people that turn up, but there's also going to be a new questions and answer session. So I'm hoping that as we evolve these, people will get more and more experience, and the questions will become a little bit more evolved, so each one of us on the call now will definitely be able to learn as we go along. That's the plan for today. So the first thing we need to focus on is, when we're doing it, why are we even concentrating on trying to create new clubs? So I'm going to slow down my speech a little bit, because I know as a native English speaker, there are some non-native English speakers that have some difficulty sometimes understanding me. So I'm going to slow down a little bit. If you have any difficulties or I'm being maybe annoyingly slow, just make, you know, you can make a comment if you want to. So the why create new clubs? This, for me, has been one of the issues for my own motivation. Of why would somebody want to create a new club when you're quite happy going to the club you're going to now? If you know, if it doesn't make any difference, you like the people that you're with, you go to the club because you enjoy being in that surrounding. Why bother to create a new club? You know, why would you want to do that? And now that you know, we have to pay for each club we're a member of as we've always had to do, the costs are not so cheap, why would we want to have a new one? The first thing is it enhances our leadership skills, and after all, that is the reason why we are personally attending Toastmasters, is that we want to increase some skill set that we have. The next thing could be maybe you want to develop your own project management proficiency. So the project management uh, proficiency, meaning that Maybe you're used to following directions, but you haven't had the chance yet to actually start making the decisions which could, you know, to, you know, to do those things. You don't want to take on a role specifically to maybe go to a district leadership position just yet, but you want to see, how, you know, your organizational skills, for example. So this is ideal time to actually practice those proficiencies. And the next is to expand your marketing expertise, and that's what I have per, uh, personally got out of it is that my marketing experience has been enhanced the more I'm trying to advertise. So there's advertising, even um, I know some of you might know some of the other Toastmasters in the district, they do a lot with sales. So you have to close the deal. If you're inviting somebody to come to a club meeting, you're closing the deal with that person to actually sign up and become a member of your club. So all these different skills, if you, you know, believe it or not, are actually used in creating a new club. So once we can answer this question of why, it becomes a motive of you know, when things don't go so well, why we should continue. The session objectives that we're going to be sponsor, uh, like trying to highlight today is one, what is the club sponsor's duties? We want to highlight those. Cultivate a corporate club. And the reason why I'm going to be focusing on corporate club first is because during, uh, in our district as a whole, there's not so many corporate clubs, even though statistically around the world, there are more corporate clubs than other clubs. So what I would like to do is to focus on corporate clubs first, exactly the same for the other ones, and then we'll do community clubs afterwards. You'll see that basically they're the same ideas, but there is a little bit of differences there. But you know, we're smart people, we can handle those sort of things. And then also to feed the enthusiasm of clubs which maybe 
not having the best of times, let's say. So how can we make other Toastmasters a little bit more enthusiastic to maybe try new things? And at the end of the day, we need to complete a charter. A charter means that we have a minimum of 20 members of a club. And then we need to, need to plan the presentation, which is the demo meeting. So these are the session's objectives. So what are the club sponsor's duties? Well, first of all, it's to organize the new club. When it means organize, it means who's going to do what, what day will it be on, like is it going to be set up as a regular club meeting, completing the paperwork and plan the charter presentation meeting, like the demo meeting. Because as a club sponsor, you can't delegate these roles, you have to do them yourself. Paperwork needs to be done. In total, there's approximate, or there is six pieces of paperwork that need to be sent to Toastmasters International. And it's up to the club sponsors, it's your duty to make sure those documentation are made. So the types of clubs which are available. Uh, could you clarify who's the club sponsors? The club sponsor is the person who wants to initiate or start that club. So that if you're sponsoring the club, you're giving your time, your effort, your commitment to try and, you know, to make that club work. It just needs to be one Toastmaster, technically. Obviously, more Toastmasters on board helps, but technically, it just needs to be one Toastmaster that can go there, and then you get other people to come on board with you, and I'll be going into more detail with this a little bit later, Ungam, okay? So what types of clubs are there? Like I mentioned already, there's corporate clubs, there's community clubs, and then there's two others which aren't very common, but you may see as you travel the world going to different Toastmaster clubs. They are advanced clubs and also, and also specialty clubs. So what's an advanced club? So corporate club and community clubs, pretty easy to understand. An advanced club is for Toastmasters which have already achieved a CC. So they go there to do their advanced manuals or to do some of the advanced topics. What do you think a specialty club could be? Hmm, maybe they could focus on table topics only, or maybe it could be wedding speeches or something. It's those sorts of clubs that actually they have some specialty that they want to focus on. It's, typically, it would be a little bit closer to an advanced club, or it could be to do with youth leadership would be another one, or to do with children and having those gavel clubs sort of things could also be another one. But if you wanted to have it for another reason, there's no... Uh, say again, Beth? Could you say that again? Yeah. In Vegas, Las Vegas, we visited a, a club that was actually a specialty club, and their specialty was humor. Specialty of humor, okay. So that could be yeah. quite a good one. That's quite a difficult subject, as we know. You know, we can all be dry, you know, and very serious, but to have a humorous, you know, specialty speech club, that could be quite difficult sometimes. But that's why it's there. Comedy, it happens. <laughs> now, the next thing we need to do is to cultivate a corporate club. This is what you need to do uh, when you apply to start a new club. This is not only for corporate clubs, for all of our clubs, uh, or a business club. Yeah, that's also the same sort of thing. Corporate clubs are business clubs, starting new things, entrepreneurial clubs, etc. Yeah. So a new club information kit is available to everybody, and you can all apply for this, and you get with it a manual called How to Build a Toastmasters Club. You also get given the links to the forms, and you also get some promotional materials. And you can request this kit by sending an email or a telephone call to newclubs at toastmasters.org, or you can call by telephone to the US number. Sometimes, you know, you want to speak to somebody on the telephone, so, you know, you can do that. The number's there, it's in the US, there will be a cost involved there. However, the new club's email, as I understood, they do get back to you quite quickly. And are the electronic materials? Yes, they are electronic. They do have the forms, electronic form already available to download. And how to build Toastmasters Club, it's actually a PDF document you can download already from toastmasters.org. You just search for how to build a Toastmasters Club from the search bar, and it would actually pop up there and you can download it. I have it on my desktop at the moment, but I'm not sure if I can show that at the moment. I don't know how to do that. I'm still new at this stuff. And what does the new club info kit cost? I will get onto that very shortly. Okay. So cultivate a corporate club. So Toastmasters teamwork is it basically, it's, it, whether it's a corporate club or any of the other uh, clubs that we're starting, 
we can have two sponsors and two mentors. It's very advantageous if you can use all of these, so there'll be four people in the beginning. The reason being is because to get to, to DTM, you need to be either a sponsor or a mentor of a new club. And so it's a great opportunity that you can use your experience to help a new club to start. Plus the new club starting, they could do with a helping hand. So if you do hear or know of a new club which is starting, it's good to help out a little bit. Maybe you'll be able to become a registered sponsor or club mentor. It's also good to inform the district director, simply because we need, or he would need, he or she would need to know the details of how well the district is performing with regards to the new clubs and you know the growth of the district. In that sense, it's also the club growth director to contact as well, because depending on where they are, they may have some resources available to you. And not forgetting the other Toastmasters, which are very important for the district, which is the AD, which is the area directors, and the DivD, which is the division directors. By having all of these people on board, you're not starting a Toastmasters club, which is one person or on your own. You're actually working as a team. And we know that a load shared between team members is a lighter load for everybody. So identify the target of a corporate club is very, e you know, is one of the easiest things to do. Typically, I'm not sure if this was something that I heard from Twire or some one of the other top leaders that we have, is that they said if you're looking for a company, <coughs> excuse me, approximately a thousand people. <coughs> Got a frog in my throat. If there's a thousand people in the company, then this is a good size. So international companies are perfect. The location of the company. I'm not really sure what this means, but if it's within your like local area, then it's fine. And the revenue of the company is also one of the things, in a sense that if the company makes a lot of money and they've got a lot of, let's say, ex available cash that you typically know of, you've heard in the local newspaper, etc., then it's possible they're looking to ex uh, spend some money on their employees, such as training costs. So if the company you know is having some good times, it's worthwhile thinking of them as a target for a corporate club. However, if it's a, they just put profit warnings and it looks like they're laying people off, maybe at this point it's not the ideal time to go to them about a club. So you can think a little bit about the revenue status. Is it a good time to go to them or not? The key contacts and decision makers is also another important thing to identify about when you know, starting a corporate club. Are you speaking to the right people or not? And then other company information, which could be important, like are they actually an English speaking or a different cultural sort of club? Because we do have some clubs in the district, such as Google, we have Pony Building, uh, Microsoft, we have many of these types of things already. So I'm going to be muting some people here, I think. Here we go. Oops, there we go. Sorry about that audio in the background. So with these happening, the recent news articles means that has the corporate entity been in the news recently saying that they want to invest in their staff members or are they expanding into a specific area? Because this could be an entrance into that company to say they want to invest in their staff. Because obviously when we do Toastmasters, we're investing in people and that's what you want to do at the end of the day. Then it comes to introducing yourself. And this is where I personally, this is my own thoughts, where the division director and the area director are really important aspects for you to approach a company. Because if you just go to a company yourself, you say, hi, I'm a Toastmaster, I would like to start a club in, you know, in the company, it's good. But if you had somebody that says, I'm the division director of Toastmaster International, and I'm a director for so many countries or so many clubs, it has that little bit of extra power, you could say, that they're speaking on a different level. They have a, like a peer sort of level there. So it could give some extra benefits to you starting your club if you have some extra weight behind you because Toastmasters is a highly respected organization globally so it's nice to use these resources as they are available and most of the area directors and division directors we have are really nice people so they want it themselves to start new clubs so if you can use them to help them with your writing of the uh, the letters to the companies I think that would be a very good way to go uh, if you're an employee, is it easier to get at least the first attention moment? Yeah, I think it is. If you're an employee in the company, you'll be able to have internal access to who to contact. And also, uh, when you're presenting it, you could set up the initial meeting. For example, we've had it here in Finland. 
that we had a meeting with MasterCard. And with that meeting, there was a local employee that had you know, said that I would like them to meet. And then we had Tuire at that time. I think she was the program quality director. She was the highest ranked person we had in Toastmasters at that time that we tried to you know, emphasize she was really important. And she's the one that went there to actually do the, 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 the speaking, which really helped for us. So in that sense, I believe that being the employee, you set up the initial meeting and then you enforce it by bringing in some other authority because typically companies like to speak to other authoritative figures, so those sort of things. So that, that's why I think it's a little bit easier if you use the division director or area director then. And it's also one of the reasons why it's nice to be the area director or division director because it also gives you some credibility when you're trying to do these negotiations in the future. That's my own personal views. I don't know if Bayer would like to add to that. Fully agree. Generally, what we see that some of the internal people become also sponsors because it's easier to use the internal network, internal systems, chat system, everything to organize it. And uh, generally, division or area director or whoever uh, experienced club club leader from other clubs who there might be club sponsors actually, yeah. other club sponsoring the new one. Uh, go with them to bring the necessary experience, those master experience. Perfect. Yep. So hopefully, um, Greta, that answered your question a little bit there. And I haven't forgotten your question either about costs, Alexandra. I'll be getting that shortly. So after we've made the initial introduction, we set up the appointment, and then we prepare for the meeting. This is the demo meeting uh, or the initial meeting with them to talk about shall we start a corporate club. Then we share about other corporations. So if we're going, for example, to, I don't know, a company, let's have Kone, the elevator company, we would actually talk about other companies of a similar size which already have a Toastmasters or, like club within them, such as Microsoft and uh, Google, those sort of things. We have some large, like very large global companies. And we do have a list of those on the district level of which companies are available. And that's available to everybody that needs it. Typically, the way it would go, you would ask your area director uh, for the list, and they will supply you with as many as we can. And that would be for your local regional area. So we have stuff to talk about that we can say there's corporations there that are doing it for real. And then you wrap it up. We just say, okay, this is what we're doing. Do you want to do? You have to go for the sale, or go, you know, you ask for the money basically in, in a sales sort of thing. You say, okay, this is the way it is. So we ask for a final commitment because they ask, how much does it cost? Now, when we're asking about how much does it cost, how many of you can write in the chat box actually know really how much money it costs to start a Toastmasters club? How much money do you think it costs? Okay, it looks like people have been reading. Yes, it's 125 US dollars to start. And it requires 20 US dollars for new members, and that has to be for everyone also, and then half a year for each member also, which is $45. So for an initial one person, it's going to be 45 plus 20. And that'll be for half a year. This money is calculated together, and that's what's gonna be your initial money for the club. So you don't have to, you know, pay out of your own pocket initially if you've got the people there that want to start. Did that answer your question, Alexandra? No, okay, if you can write your question there again, because the, how much does it cost is $125. Yeah, no, originally my, the, the cost for this new kit. Ah, the kit, it actually comes, if you send an email to Toastmasters, they will actually send it to you because it's a digital form. It doesn't cost anything. Okay, the kit does not cost it. Okay, no. thank you. Because it's basically a digital form. It's like a ma an e like a manual in PDF form, and then there's some of the forms which say like you know how to register and charter the comp um, the clubs and stuff like that. That's all the free stuff. Then they have some templates and stuff as well. So that it doesn't cost anything. But once you've sent those forms in, then you have to start paying some money. Okay, gotcha, thank you. Cool. Okay, so once you've finalized the financial commitment from the club, uh, from the corporate club, it means that necess not necessarily going to pay for 100%. It could be a corporate club. They don't pay for everything. It could be, okay, we've got a budget per employee, and we're going to pay 10 euros 
only or ten dollars only and so the rest of the money has to come from the members of the club this can happen so when you get a financial commitment you cannot assume that a corporate club will be paying for everything and if a corporate club does pay for the you know for the club to start are they paying just the minimum costs which is paid directly to Toastmasters International or do they pay a little bit extra so that the club has a working budget so that they're able to then purchase things like new ribbons uh, the evaluation sheets and those sort of things so you need to really find out what do you actually have what's being committed to determine what portion of the club costs the company will pay and you need to do that you know because money really does matter when you're the beginning and then designate a club officer to hold the payments this is equivalent to the club treasurer the hold payments until they are sent to Toastmasters International and this is going to be the hundred and twenty five dollars as far as I understand at the moment and how it's been done in the past is that usually it's made with a credit card transaction so somebody will you know basically pay from their own personal credit card and then they will claim back from the club as a reimbursement I'm not sure if every club does this but typically that's what's been happening is that you pay your own card and then just take it back from the club full payment or only the 125 as far as I understand it's the 125 is the payment that's there typically and then after that it's going to be the 20 plus member stuff for the chartering because initially it's to become a prospective club and then when you do the charter club you actually get the other you pay the other bills then it's when you get that status but the 125 is what we're talking about at the moment and then deposit the money into the other clubs account well, basically the other one Just a quick comment on why the paying the 125 in advance is beneficial. Yes. I find that when we try to recruit members, unless you already have the 20 people in advance, we have to recruit members. Mm -hmm. And if you pay the 125, you will get already the starter kits for 20 people, the competent communicator, competent leader. And I found that when people show up on the demo meeting, and if they join, they can get it right away. Mm. It's uh, it's attractive. It's more difficult to recruit them without giving them the material so that they can get started. Okay. So did everyone understand that? So there's you can pay for the whole 20 members in advance, which means that you might not have all the money there. It comes from the originator. Or you can wait You know when you've got the enough to get to the 125 and Alexandra Manjur she's said already correctly there that six months in advance plus the 20 for the manuals is also to do those so I think that's cleared this one nobody wants that club <laughs> exactly there is definitely a risk there so the next one is oops yep is the demonstration meeting I never really thought this has been a problem for any of the clubs that we've had so far that's been a demo it's basically a Toastmasters meeting running as normal however because not many of the people in the demonstration meeting are Toastmasters what they are is actually they're going to be the members that we're demonstrating to are actually the participants so we're telling them or guiding them what the role is and then we're letting them actually do the meeting themselves so they are the meeting participants and they are the meeting functioners as well we try to just be the guidance there if there's any other Toastmasters that are going to be there so the Toastmaster of the meeting doesn't necessarily have to be an experienced Toastmaster you just tell them what to do and they can read from the agenda a timer again you just explain to who they're going to be our counters so it should be going across that the demo meeting is a real demo meeting so that they can feel that they can do it themselves the demonstration meeting should be short and within time limits try to use best practices like start on time and finish on time to give the best possible uh, impression of what Toastmasters is about include three aspects if possible if the time limit allows such as a speech a prepared speech an evaluation and if possible table topics with the table topics you can usually get a lot of people involved with that whereas a prepared speech you can ask somebody beforehand would they be able to do some of that and it'd be an icebreaker for example and then a more experienced Toastmaster or one of the other members of the group could give the evaluation this gives them the opinion um, the very good incentive that it's, it's a peer group that we're also 
um, we're organizing. It's not going to be like teacher led, where we're the, you know, they're the students and we're the teachers. It's actually peer review. And this is important in the very beginning. Select a demonstration meeting team, and that's the people who would be in the functioneers. Again, it doesn't necessarily have to be existing Toastmasters, and it's best if they're not. If you have the existing Toastmasters as like guidance and the actual members of the new club to actually be doing the activities. Select the Toastmasters to assume various roles, and then invite high-level representatives such as the CEO or the HR managers, etc., that will be making the decision whether this is the type of club they would like to have and have the, each guest to sign the guest book. Why would you need this? It's because you want to be able to follow up with them to invite them to the next meeting. So contact names such as emails and also telephone numbers are appreciated. And then one very, very important part, which is overlooked a lot, is have 20 printed membership forms ready. And on the membership forms, have the bank account details where they need to send the money to to become a member. If you have these ready, and they're already there to do during a demonstration meeting, there's a higher chance that you would be able to charter a lot faster. Typically, globally, there's a statistic um, that was said that on average, globally, in Toastmasters, between two and a half to three months to charter a club. However, personally speaking, I haven't seen that happening so much in Europe or the Nordics. Usually, it's a little bit longer here. But if we think that it shouldn't take so long for a club to go from demonstration meeting all the way through to being chartering, we need to try and make it as smooth as possible. It's easier if we've got the materials already for them. Then the demonstration meeting, before the demonstration meeting, it just means, or the demo meeting, we just gotta make sure the area is set up nicely, make sure everything's organized, name labels, etc. During the demonstration meeting, if anything goes wrong, just go over it, just say this happens. Don't say, oh, disaster, you know, you're a Toastmaster. These things happen. We just, you know, the projector doesn't work. These things happen, it's real life. So we just have to flow with the way the meetings go. Now, after the demonstration meeting is when we start having the real meat and potatoes, you could say, of what we're doing with the demo. We introduce the sponsors and the mentors to the members of the club, because it's possible they don't know who those sponsors or mentors of the club are, and they don't know what benefits they can get from sponsors and mentors. Do we know the difference between sponsors and mentors? Okay. Sponsors are till the moment the club is started, and mentors are after it is started for the first few, few months, to six months, to one year. Yeah, but basically you could have like four sponsors because they all can do interchangeable roles. It's just a term for each role that they have. These are people that help you with a little bit of extra experience to get your club off the ground and running healthily. That's how I understand sponsors and mentors to be. Uh, you conduct a brief question and answer session after the demonstration meeting. I think most clubs in the district do this already. So we have like, if there's a guest there, would you say like, what you'd like about the meeting, those sort of things. During a demonstration meeting at the end, this is also very important. What do they like and their own feedback so you can improve next time. Then ask the Toastmaster members to share their success stories from existing Toastmasters, such as why did they join Toastmasters? What are, you know, where did they see themselves going in the future? you know, those sort of things, and then complete the application to organize form. This is one of the six forms you use when you get your package to create a new club. And then submit the application to organize to world headquarters with the charter fee. If you don't have the charter fee with it and you don't submit all of the application forms in order, the club will not charter to get organized, okay? The next thing is the Toastmasters Community Clubs. So the teamwork is, again, a little bit similar to the uh, business clubs or the corporate clubs we had. And you'll see that these slides are very, very similar to a corporate club. However, the community club, let's say, is a little bit easier because there's less bureaucracy involved. Again, it's two sponsors, two mentors. The district director should be involved. The club growth director should be involved also. And then also the other Toastmasters, such as the district leaders of the area director and the division director. Again, for the chartering process, demonstration meeting, and remember to publicize the meeting. How can we publicize a meeting, such as on social media, is a popular thing at the moment, you can use Facebook, Instagram, we have our Instagram uh, uh, PR team, we have Wendy, which is our current uh, division uh, district 
PR lady. She can help publicize these community clubs to a huge mass audience, basically. And then also she can supply a lot of ideas on how we can create notice board ads and other things for the lo local media, Google ads, etc. Display posters and announcements. We do have some templates for these, and there's also templates available at toastmasters.org, such as logos and those little, I think they're called rays or that graphics that you can use there too. So we do have facilities for those from toastmasters.org. And then target specialized groups, such as if you would like to start a club at your local kennel, that's where they you know, take your dog or something, then it could be there's a, other dog owners or other dog, dog clubs in the local area. So you could have it as part of those groups too. So we can also target those other groups for chartering a community club. And then the enthusiasm side of things. Announce the next meeting during the charter, uh, during the meeting that you're having, because they know where the next meeting is going to happen. It's very important that you do this, otherwise you're leaving people in the wild, like in the wind, a little bit, that they don't know where to go. Select the temporary officers by assigning people with a temporary role. It gives them ownership of what they're going to be doing. So if somebody is told that they're going to be the sergeant of arms and this is what their role is, you can give them a description of what their role entails and you will find that they will take it more seriously rather than just assuming that, okay, somebody's going to do something and that's it. If you select the temporary officers during the first chartering or during the first couple of meetings, you will see that you will have better results. And then follow up with reminder notices. I know in the beginning this may get a little bit frustrating. But if you can give each person an SMS or a WhatsApp message or telephone call even to say, hey, are you going to the meeting next week or are you going to the meeting tomorrow, you will get much more people turning up than you do if you just assume people will turn up in a week's time. So these follow-up reminder notices are very important in the beginning so that people get into the attitude that they know how to create, you know, go to the meetings regularly. And then collect money from those people who have decided to join. In the beginning, it could be, we usually say you can come to as many meetings as you like to without paying, you can come as a guest. But in the beginning of a club, those monies are really important because you want to be able to register the club to start. So in that sense, you it's not like you're hounding people for money, but you need to be really focused. And you know, I know it's un, unsavory sometimes, let's say, but you're asking you know, if they want to be a member of the club, give children the value, can you please pay the money now? and keep on to those because they decided to join. And then obtain enough money to pay the, you know, the chartering fees. Because once you've got enough, then pay to get your club registered. It's as simple as that. This is the hardest part though, is to obtain the money from people if you're not used to asking for money. If that's the skill you need to improve, then we can help people with improving that. And then conclude with recognition. Remember you've got your, you know, when we come to Toastmasters, we do the lots of clapping and we get the ribbons. This is what we should also include when we're doing the beginning chartering of a, of a club. Because a lot of people will not be used to that. They will if they go to an existing club, but if it's a corporate club, for example, it may not be the company culture to start clapping if somebody goes to give a speech at the beginning. Or it could be the boss is going to be in the meeting or some senior member of the, you know, the the hierarchy of the company and they'll start clapping and those sort of things. So you should give recognition where it's due and so that they get used to the culture that we do in Toastmasters. And then the next one, it goes, yep, the charter papers, they're all available for download in digital form uh, without having to send the email. You can download them already. Say you made a mistake and you want to print them already. They're available at toastmasters.org as the item number 121. Each of these forms have a specific item which needs to be done. If one of these items is not done, then the process is halted until it is done. And you will get a letter, a, a polite letter from Toastmasters International, sent as an email typically, and it will tell you the corrective actions to do so that they can process it. It's a very, it's a painless way of going through, and typically the area director and division director will help on every step of this going through. And so if you haven't got enough time or efforts, there are people to help you with these paperworks. They're not complicated. Um, believe me, we can, you know, you can go through these very simply, as long as you go through step by step, take a little bit of time, maybe go for a dinner or a coffee break with, you know, with another member of the Toastmaster, you know, your, um, what's it called, the area director, for example, and they will talk you through this. But once these papers to charter are done, then you're ready. And then it's just sending the payment form off and you're done. The presentation, 
how do you do that? It's basically uh, for the demo meeting, for example, is invite the guests. Now, remember, when you invite people to come to a presentation, not everybody is going to turn up. I know they might be your best buddy and those sort of things, but if you invite, say, 20 people, it's possible only five will turn up. So invite more guests than what you're expecting, just because some people will not turn up. Publicize the charter pres uh, event with uh, Wendy, like the district, and also to other clubs so they can help with promoting the activities that you're doing. For example, if there's some other clubs nearby, say that you are trying to create a new club. They will support you during their own meeting. They will be announcing at the end of their meeting, say, hey, there's a new club starting. If you know anybody in the area, please let them know. Because we do live in a connected world, and let's say most of the time it will be that somebody might know somebody in that local area where you're trying to start. Form committees. In the Toastmasters career that you're having, you'll get very good at this, is that there'll be committees for everything. So you'll be taking a role volunteering for different things. So there'll be somebody for PR, somebody to get in the, let's say, the paper sign. There'll be somebody else that wants to get the, the meeting location. This committees is not going to be extra workload. It's so that you can actually get used to making uh, time management. And you can also get used to having small goal settings like schedules. By knowing how to manage your own time and the goal settings, you will find that a lot more things in normal everyday life will become a little bit easier. So this forming committees, for me personally, has been a big asset of being the Toastmasters. And then include a short meeting as part of the presentation for the demo meeting as well. And then prepare the printed program. Typically, we use EasySpeak. However, EasySpeak is not necessarily needed in the beginning if you haven't got access to that. Most people will have access to EasySpeak, and it'll be there. It's a good one to get the template from. But if not, you'll be able to get a template of what can be used from the area director or division director to help you with that. And so you just got to fill in the details of what's going to be the agenda. There's a very specific template we can use. And then remember your 20 printed membership forms. So as you see, the difference between a corporate presentation or corporate a demo meeting and a community club is very, very similar. There's really no difference between them. Can and I add a quick comment to that? Yeah, of course. This is my last slide, so of course you can. Uh, regarding the invite people part, make sure that there is a registration. Use some kind of tools. Even Bright or even Zilla are free if you don't collect any money. In Hungary, we had multiple times a room for 30 to 40 people, and then we had 50, 60 people. Without the registration, we could have actually had to lock out people. So make sure that for the demo meetings, if you are doing a good job with the PR, it can be a very pleasant surprise. Okay, like a pre-registration, you mean? Pre-registration okay. before the event to make sure that you can move the location and you can inform the people who registered if you have more people and it's, the room is, original room is not big enough. Yep, good to know. Good, good advice there. Yep, cool. And then in closing, we do have the How to Build a Toastmasters Club manual. This is available from Toastmasters International. You just search for How to Build a Toastmasters Club and you'll get the PDF for downloading there. So this is the last slide that I had for the uh, main agenda. And then I'd like to go on to the second part now, which is the Q&A session. And this is what I'm hoping is going to be the most valuable part of when we have these uh, it, like webinars on a regular basis. Uh, the next webinar I'm hoping to have in the first week of March, and I'll be advertising it again on the Toastmasters uh, Facebook page, and Wendy will be helping me with the promotions of those. And I've also created a Facebook group called D95 Club Growth. What, and this is a public uh, Facebook page. And so the idea of having this is that we'll be able to talk among ourselves about what we can do and best practices that we've learned. I think this is something that may be a good idea or not, but it's something that I thought maybe we could try at least in the beginning. So this is the, the Q&A session. If anybody would like to ask any specific questions that they have at the moment for starting a club, now's the time. We do have some very, very experienced people now. So if you'd like to speak, hey. I can release the microphone for you. Okay? David? Yeah? This is, a, this is Alexandra. Yeah? A uh, question. We, you and I chatted a little bit about the youth leadership program. Uh, yeah. Are you going to take up 
anything more on this soon? Yep. Because so, I'm, I need some urgent help with that. Yep. What I can do is the Youth Leadership Programme, I'm going to be having a meeting with the core team on Monday, this coming Monday, and I'm going to yeah. be talking with them about what's the programme for the Youth Leadership Programme, because I, need, I can't just do it myself, it's something that I need to have help with, and I'd like to get as much input from the division directors and area directors as possible, because with their help, I know that we could make the Youth Leadership Programme a lot better. But what it would be, it would initially possibly be a webinar format like we've got now. And it would be focused, because we do have some very experienced people that do youth leadership, and you've already got the contact of one of those people. And when we've got this, I'm hoping that it will be during February, when we'd have the first time that this happens. But it's something that's on the books, but I don't know all the details yet, but it will be talked about on Monday. Okay. Uh, because I already have a group of 10 people. Okay. Cool. This is good. And does your area director know this already? Uh, uh, no, but I have con I have some contact with Lorena, but she's in the states right now. She, she's promised okay. to help, but she doesn't. Okay, who's I can't your get a hold of her anymore. yeah? Who's your division director? Is it Dirage? Uh, dear, dear, he he told me to contact uh, Lorena. Okay. So as long as he knows, because I can speak to him also when we have the next thing, so we make sure we're on the same page, so we can give you the, the best support possible. The information yeah, for the Youth Leadership Program is online, so we'll be able to give you the manuals and that already. But rather than doing it all by yourself, it's better if you do it as a team. And with that team, exactly. it would be like the area director, division director, you, and maybe some of the other experienced Toastmasters locally to you, if not within our own div uh, division or district that would like to do that. So I wouldn't suggest doing it by yourself. Obviously, you can look at the manuals by yourself now, but it might be more interesting to do it with other people as well, because it's also for a high-performance leadership. You can do youth leadership program. Yeah, I I I tried to download okay. from Toastmasters.org okay. last week, mm -hmm. and I couldn't. It it didn't work. It okay, was I'll not available at the yeah. moment. Okay, I'll send it I'll to you. It might be a problem. Yeah. Okay. So okay, thank you. Okay. Is there any other questions at the moment? Who else would I saw Alexandra's um, muted? Alexandra Manager, would you like to have a the microphone? I'm not a manager. I don't know why it says manager. No, no, no. Can it's uh, a, it's her last name. Yeah, her name's. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, great. Okay. Yeah, I've got a quite specific question regarding transfer members. Okay. We are at the moment. Um, uh, just before our first demonstration meeting, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, and I have a lady who's already asked whether she could join us. Obviously, she can't because the club doesn't exist yet. Um, so, the thing is the following. We are starting first demonstration meeting end of March. Yep. She is still a member in Malaysia, and she won't renew with them in April, so she will drop out. Meanwhile, our club, new club, Bamberg Toastmasters, is not um, chartered and won't be for a long time. Um, so at least so I've been told that it takes a while to get 20 members together. Yep. So for this lady, um, if she joins us now, let's say in April, if she pays us the fee, we won't pay on, to TMI until the moment we charter. So that means she doesn't exist for TMI during that time that it needs us to get the club chartered. That's correct. Yeah. So what happens with her speeches, and can I take her money then? Yep. The way the speeches go is if it would be for any of the members of Toastmasters, or that's you know not really a Toastmaster at the moment, but they're just starting with the new club. So their speeches will be recognized once the club is chartered. So there's like this, let's say, this period yeah, but, uh, between. So it will be recognized. However, it won't be recognized until the club is actually in the process of uh, being in a prospective state, which means the 125 euros has been paid. And then you can give clubs, you can get rec um, the actual recognition for each of the speeches that's been given. The difference between prospective club and chartered club is the number of members. So if you want to use the Toastmasters agendas and the Toastmasters material, 
technically, the you know, to, to, to follow the rules, you should be a prospective club to use the logos and those sort of things, use the format. You need to be a prospective club, which means that you've paid to Toastmasters the $125 uh, uh, so that you've right. registered. Right. Yeah. After that, it's... Yeah, I know that. Yeah, um, yeah I know that. Uh, but I w would like to do two demo meetings before that so I okay. can see whether there's actually a chance of creating a club in this area at yeah. all. Because cool. otherwise, I will lose 125 euros. Yes. So, okay, let's assume this lady drops out of Malaysia Toastmasters, joins us, um, pays to us the the membership fee, which we're holding until the moment of charter. Yes. And then we'll, we'll, we'll uh, hand in our application to organize, like in uh, May. Yep. Um, does she then, although we don't pay for her, her to TMI yet, only when we're chattering, do her speeches count then? Because, I mean, TMI won't know anything about her. They know that we have a prospective club, but yes. they don't know any names of any members. So she will, she will probably get um, emails by TMI mm -hmm. uh, making her graced and reminding her to pay and everything. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, she's given us the money mm -hmm. for the prospective club. So this will be a bit of an awkward situation, I yes. think. Okay. TMI is not sending messages to Grace uh, people, Grace members. Okay. This is the role of the club. So she will not get this message. But the challenge is, uh, I mean, in Hungary, when we have this kind of situation, I mm -hmm. generally recommend the people to join into one of the existing clubs, and as soon as the new club is ready to charter, they can transfer it. And you don't need to pay for the transfer members for that period because they have already paid in another club. So, and uh, the, because the challenge for this person, the, the speeches will count as long as they are recorded in the, in the competent communicator manual, mm -hmm. but this person will not be in good standing. So from the point of mm -hmm. any con, uh, competition, even being judged on a competition and all those kind of things, this person will not uh, qualify. Or he or she can even uh, pay the next period for Malaysia stay there to keep the continued to the mem membership and being transferred once the club is chattering. Right, okay. Yeah, I was thinking about that, but of course I would like to have her money <laughs> during the setup phase, which will yeah. of course be a good thing to have, but apparently this is not possible then. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that. Yeah. Yeah. Also, before you go, um, the demo meetings that you were talking about, there was two of them. Yeah. Have you informed your area director and division director about those? Yeah, all of them are informed. Yep, because the reason being yep. is that at the beginning of the Toastmasters year, the area directors and division directors were each asked to create their own budgets. And part of that budget requirement that they made was that they would be how many demo meetings and how many clubs they'd like to have, etc. So there is a budget available for demo meetings. It's a very small budget. And you know it's dependent on you know different sort of area directors and division directors, but to cover some of the costs, there is something available there. So it's worthwhile speaking to your area director what actually is available for you, so that you might be able to have some cookies and some sort of snacks and stuff like that, some coffees, etc., uh -huh. and printed materials, actually, those been, sort of things. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Actually, actually, we've been told we're going to get some of our flyer printing costs. Reimbursed. Yep. There seems to be a marketing budget as well, Excellent. but obviously the 125 is something that we need to get as a yeah, sponsoring from other clubs in our area or pay out of our own pocket. Yeah, it's actually good that you mentioned that. It, it's possible for another club, an existing club, to pay for that prospective 125 uh, starting fee. So there is a club here that we had in Finland, for example, that did that. There's the it's the Finnish club, I forget what it's called. Stadin, no, what's it called? Sanasepat. They were actually sponsored by another club. So the members there, they didn't have to fork out the money in advance. And that was able, uh, gave the ability that the club was able to start a little bit faster in that sense. So that's also an option. So good that you raised that point, Alexandra. Thank you. Yep. So I'm going to mute your microphone now. And then is there anybody else that would like to have any questions at the moment? We still have some time left. I think there's 10 minutes left. Uh, I actually have a, 
a quick story about starting a new club okay. that I'm very passionate about. We have a young guy who is a cameraman and generally he goes uh, for uh, Monday morning out of Budapest and comes back on Friday evening. So there was no chance to participate in any of the Toastmaster clubs. And last fall he came to me telling that, Bea, it's not going to work that I cannot come to Toastmasters. We need to do something. How do I start a weekend club? And now we have the prospective club, the Saturday Toastmasters club already in Budapest. And I think these are the kind of initiatives that we are looking for. Yep. So if you have anyone who wants to go to Toastmasters but cannot find a date, have them to create a new club. Yep, perfect. And also for clubs that are getting a little bit large. When we talk about large clubs, it's for clubs, say, that are larger than 40 members. I think there's two clubs, possibly three clubs in Germany, for example, that have a lot of members. However, they're a little bit resistant about splitting up because they're worried about losing the club culture. But these are also things that why would they want to do that? So on the very first slide that I showed today, it was like, why would you want to create a new club? It's about you know learning some personal skills yourself and expanding the Toastmasters message because I heard this, I've mentioned it many times, there's a Toastmaster in Sweden, her name is Kirsten Lofsted, and she mentioned many, I think it was like two years ago during a training that Toastmasters is possibly the world's best kept secret. That's what I've attributed to her, it's her quote, and I do believe that still, and I think it's every one of the Toastmasters, if you've got any value from Toastmasters at all, it's up to us to bring that message to as many to other people as possible. It's like our gift to the world, you could say. So don't keep it a secret any longer. Uh, yeah. Anybody else that would like to speak? Hello, David. Hi. Hello. Is that Laura? Yeah, that's me, Laura. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've been uh, writing in the chat, but would you know more about uh, Toastmasters and educational institutions, or do, don't they really exist? So it's either corporate or community. Educational institutions. Like universities, uh, universities, uh, polytechnics, that type of thing. Okay, actually we have some, I think it was in Norway we had a club or something like that that was actually meeting in universities, I think it was. But it's just what we would call a corporate club, uh, no sorry, a community club is how they meet in universities, etc. because they're open to the public. But then again, it could also be, because you know, typically a university doesn't have a budget. So in that sense, you'd have it available to a public or a specialty club, which means that you'll be doing for specific you know, engineering or it could be a language course or something, so those sort of things. So in that sense, there's no difference at all from being an ordinary club. Okay, so, so no, I'm just, uh, yeah. well, I'm just trying to think of the approach, like would it be more co corporate in the sense of having to get permission to have such activities within the the establishment or community and just starting from a grassroots level like talking okay. about it. Yeah, we have yeah. Helsinki Toastmasters which is my own home club and we actually okay. meet in Metropolia which is a university slash polytechnic environment and we do mm -hmm. have some members of the faculty and also members, you know, students as members of our club. And the way that yeah. it went that we could use their facilities was that they had some members there that went to the the facility owners and just could they reserve the rooms mm -hmm. and that's how it worked. It wasn't oh. part of any specific it's like can we reserve the room for, you know, this curriculum activities and that's what we did. And we've been there now for quite a while. The only aspect that we had to do was that we have people that are either from the faculty or student members which are member of our club. Because obviously okay. you can't have just like yeah. just using this for nothing. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Yes. I would actually recommend to you to really set up a community club where non-university people can go as well. Okay. Because yeah. There were some university clubs in Europe as well, but globally I heard about them as well. Mm -hmm. uh, since the students get changed from year to year, and there are the uh -huh. examination periods, if you start yeah. a corporate club with students only. Then in next September, you start building a new club, basically recruiting new members. Ah, uh, that's a good point. So if there are no stable people, so if there are multiple teachers who are taking ownership, it can help a lot. But I do recommend, we have some initiatives in Hungary, and I recommend it that don't make a dedicated university club, because mm -hmm. it's a pain in the back. <laughs> but if you 
Western club? Students yeah. can join, but you have the standard ongoing members who will be there yeah. for years. Yeah. And, rem and also yeah, remember, yeah, and remember that a university club will typically have a life cycle of maybe three to four years, because mm -hmm. as the leaders they do their education, and once they graduate, they will typically move away. That's been an issue, for example, in Vasa. There's it's been some university started off as a university club, and now they're having problems yeah. as people graduate; they're moving away. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good points. Thanks for that. I'm glad I asked. Thanks. Thanks. Is there any other question? We still have. Can, can I raise a question? Yeah, sure. Who's this? Uh, I'm Udam uh, from Olu. Okay. Uh, I've been asking some questions and already it's been answered, but could you share some of the uh, usual or general problems while starting a club from scratch? Like I, I have no one who knows about Toastmasters here mm -hmm. and only like a few people knows about it, but no one is a member, actual member, and I'm also, I've also become a member of Toastmaster Vasa and I'm just starting my let's say, career in Toastmasters. So could you share some of the general problems? Yep, I can answer this one. Is that okay, Bear? So some of the issues that they have with starting a club is, I would say, the biggest one is not getting enough members that are active to help with organizing a club meeting. This is not only for a brand new club, it's also for some of the existing clubs is that having consistent memberships so that you can actually run a, a regular meeting. When you have a club such as the one in Olu, where there are no existing Toastmasters, you could say anywhere near, the support you're getting, for example, from Vasa Toastmasters and possibly from Tampere Toastmasters and Turku is of paramount support because they're the ones that can connect to you via Skype, for example, and also to visit you so that you're regular meetings will start up. So in that sense, it's working with the uh, area director, which is Adriana, and she'll be able to work with you to make sure that you'll be able to have the resources available to have the demo meetings, because that's where the stage you are at the moment, to have the demo meetings there, so you can have enough people to advertise to, so that you can start off on a good footing. If you try to launch mm -hmm. your meetings before you have enough pe people like going there, it could be you're going to a cycle of almost, I wouldn't say burnout, it's a bit too much, a bit too strong wording, but you'll be going into the, the cycle of like you're trying all you can to try and advertise yourself with the information that you currently have available to you, but you're reinventing the wheel. Toastmasters has been around for more than 90 years, and starting new clubs is, let's say, is very well documented, and the problems which are happening is to try and get off the ground in the beginning. That's that's the initial thing, this initial advertising. And that's where the initial team of coming from the area director, division director, and some existing Toastmasters, which are relatively close, can support you. If that answered the question. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, I'm in touch with Adriana already. Yep, and so I can also support her. Yep. So what we will do is we'll arrange to have a demo meeting in Olu. Yep, that would be great. Yeah. And I'm uh, meeting, I think, Adriana this weekend for officers training, training. or something. Yeah, that's correct, yes. In yeah. Yeah. yeah, on Saturday, I believe. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm coming there. Hopefully, I'll get some tangible uh, commitment from them as well. Yep, perfect. Because there could be a small budget available to help with um, make some advertisements. Where's the mm -hmm. key areas you would like to advertise to in Olu, like where is it a company or is it a community club, a specific type of community club, because it's like mm, Olu, it's, I see you have a university, uh, yeah, university. Uh, it's basically at the university, yeah, university of Olu, yep. uh, and I'm currently working there as well, and university is already totally supportive in terms of fin financing the club, cool. as well as giving some uh, budget for marketing. Okay, so it seems like it's almost a done deal already with those things. Uh, I mm -hmm. believe that Gabriella is also might be informed about this already. So I do think that you're already on the very good aspects to get to those. As for difficulty, the difficulty mm -hmm. is just trying to get those Memory. first initial people to yeah. try and get your own club meeting started. Until you've got that, it could be. Look, that's what I would say the biggest issue at the moment is. 
when it comes to yeah. paperwork and stuff, I really don't see that being a difficulty. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Yeah. You're welcome. And so now we've come to the time that the meeting has the you know should be finishing, let's say. I hope there has been some value coming from today's webinar. I do intend having this on a regular basis. Like I said, the next one will be during the first week of March. I have to check with the district secretary what dates we can have available and the times that are available, but it will be promoted on our Facebook district Facebook page. We've got the Facebook group that I've created now. It's up to you if you'd like to use it or not to go forward. And if you have any other questions that you think about after this event, please send me a text message or a, um, a message with email. You can find my details online, and you know, I'm not very difficult to contact, basically. You can let me know. If not, you can let Bea know. Bea has been a past Club Growth Director. Was it called Club Growth Director when you was the, the role, Bea? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Bea was, it, yeah, so Bea was the past Club Growth Director. She has a lot of knowledge and experience. So. We do have a lot of ability that we can support the issues that you do have on a day-to-day -day basis. We are a little bit under at the moment for the district, the amount of new clubs that are starting. So this is ideal time to go out there and think, would you be able to start a new club yourself? I look forward to seeing some of you or all of you at the next webinar in March. I would hope that we could also get some testimonials from some of you about some of the experiences you've had and maybe also some experiential stuff that you've tried to, you know, you've forwarded that maybe you'll be interested in, maybe a youth leadership program or a specialty club of your own. So looking forward to see you at our next meeting in March. Thank you very much. And uh, David, can you hold on a second? Yeah, of course. Uh, well, where, uh, where are we going to be able to look and listen to this recording? That's a good, good question. I was told to make the recording, and then I'm giving it to Wendy. And Wendy was, I'm assuming, she's going to post it to the Facebook like group there or even on EasySpeak. However, I, I I don't know where it's going to be posted. I was just told I needed to make it. I would have a proposition yep. because on the district web page, there is a page called Club Growth Resources where our last year webinar is available. Mm -hmm. So we can talk to Wendy to see if she could add to the same page so that we would have a central depository. Okay. And once it's posted on the web page, we can just share it in Facebook or anywhere else. Okay. We could try that. Wendy's a clever girl, so she'll be able to sort it out. Or she'll say a clever lady. She, she's, she knows her, her bits that she needs to do, so I believe she can. Okay. Okay. So thanks very much, everybody. Have a nice evening, and I look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you, David. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.